when evaluating wholesale beef loins, and whether they're beef loins or short loins or ribs, they all have this ribeye muscle in that cut. This is the original grading surface that is used to grade a carcass. Therefore, it is important to look at that because a lot of the value on the loin or a carcass, regardless if that eye is present, is placed on the amount of marbling and the overall quality grade of that particular cut or carcass. So that is why this is called a quality class. Beef loins are a quality class and quality is going to be the first thing that you're going to want to take into consideration as you evaluate those particular cuts. So the first thing you want to do is you want to look at the marbling score and determine a quality grade for each of these loins in the class that you're going to look at. And as you do that, you're going to put them generally into three categories, maybe four categories. First is prime, then top choice, low choice, select, and actually a fifth one, standard, because occasionally you'll see a standard uh, wholesale loin in the class or rib in the class. If you see a standard, that, all, that cut almost always goes to the bottom. And a standard would be a cut that has no marbling inside, almost no marbling inside that loin eye. All right, so you determine quality first and determine which class does it fit. Is it prime, top choice, low choice, or select, or standard? After you make that decision, then generally uh, the second thing that you're going to do is determine a yield grade for that particular cut or carcass. And in the loins, we have two of the factors that you can evaluate in these loins that are in the yield grade equation that you can use. First of all, in any cut class or any wholesale carcass class, you assume that all the cuts are the same weight. That's just a general assumption that you always make. So weight is constant. Okay, with weight constant, then the cut that has less fat here, okay, generally is going to have a better yield grade, right? A more uh, lower number yield grade, a better yield grade. Also one that has a larger ribeye, okay, will have a better yield grade. Now you'll look at these two and you'll make an evaluation of those and the first thing you want to do is just like you would in beef carcass grading, you'll do, look at the point from the bottom of the ribeye here to the top of the ribeye, you'll go three quarters of the way up and take a measurement at that point. And that's what you call your 12th rib fat thickness and you can determine a preliminary yield grade from that. And you'll do that for both of those cuts. Then secondly, you'll evaluate the size of that loin eye. And as you evaluate, you can say things, you may not have to guess the actual score inches, but you'll say, look at those two, and you'll say, well, this one is a larger ribeye. It's about an inch and a half greater. You can say things like, that's a half a yield grade. An inch and a half greater ribeye is about a half a yield grade advantage. So as you look at these two loins, you have an idea now, even without looking at the rest of the, the cuts, that this one is probably going to go over this one because as far as quality grade, they're fairly similar as far as their overall quality grade in these two cuts. Now, don't be fooled into only looking at this place. You need to look both at the sirloin end as well as the rest of the cut. Generally, what you're going to do is if, as you look at the quality grade, if they are the same category, whether it's prime, top choice, low choice, select, or standard, if they're both the same quality grade, then generally you're going to place them according to trimness and muscling. And I always encourage students to look at trimness first. Look at trimness first, and if they're close in trimness, then you place them on muscling. All right, that's if they're in the same quality grade. And where you're going to look for for trimness is you're going to look over the ribeye or the loin eye. In the case of loins, ribeye in case of ribs, you look over that area, not just the one point that you measure fat, but over the entire cut surface. Then also you're going to look at over the back region, which is this area where the loin eye travels from here to here. The loin eye goes right through that, that, that region. And so you look over the, the fat over the back. Then this area is called the loin edge. This is a wholesale loin, so this is the loin edge. And the flank actually comes from this area where my hand is. And so we call this the flank edge. Now, another place that you want to look for trimness is what we call the sirloin region. Actually, a wholesale loin is broken up into the short loin, which is where my two hands are now. Going from here forward it would be the short loin, and from here backwards is the sirloin. So you have those two regions as well. You can talk about the sir less fat over the short loin region or less fat over the sirloin region. So you'll look at the deposit of fat over the sirloin region as well as over the back, loin edge, and flank edge. And then finally, you'll also go the other side of these cuts. Make sure you do that 
and take a look at the uh, fat over the sirloin face. Because you really have two windows. You have a window here and a window here. Generally, the fatter they are on both of these sides, the fatter they are on the rest of the cut. So good places to look at. Now, muscling, you're going to evaluate by looking at the size of this ribeye muscle or loin eye, depending whether it's a rib or loin. You're going to look at the plumpness of this back. And fat animals, this looks pretty fat and uh, flat and shelfy. But as animals are more muscular and they have more shape and more muscular ribeye, remember that's a round muscle, so you get more plumpness as you go over that cut. And then you look at the prominence and the bulge in the sirloin region when you evaluate these loins. And then also you look at the amount of muscle that you see in the sirloin face. All right, then the last thing that you want to talk about okay, is when you're going to talk reasons or you look at questions, for example, is you've already determined that one's higher quality or lower quality, you've already looked at that quality grade, but you want to look really at three factors, pre maybe four predominant factors. First one, in, as far as quality, most important factor is the amount of marbling. Which one has more marbling between the two loin eyes? Okay, and then secondly, you look at color, because when you go to a retail counter, most consumers buy based off of color. So color is very important in any meat evaluation class that you're looking at. Then you look at the firmness of the face. How firm is it? Is it loose, okay, or is it firm and fairly straight? That's a good indication that uh, it is higher quality. Firmness is better. And then another one that we talk about sometimes is texture. And texture is kind of the graininess of the surface of the muscle. Is it real kind of coarse appearing or is it fine? Uh, for example, a tenderloin versus an eye of round. Eye of round is very coarse textured. You can see the very mus the, the muscle bundles of that cut. And a tenderloin is velvety in appearance and a very smooth across the surface of that cut. And so you want to evaluate that even in, within the rib eye or loin eye muscle that you see here. So you're going to put those factors together and come up with an overall evaluation. So remember, first you look at quality. Most important to do that. And then secondly, you look at the trimness and the muscularity of those particular cuts. Now we're all looking at the sirloin end in this full loin class. The sirloin end is broken into two primary muscle groups. And the first one is this one up here, which we call the top sirloin. And this one that looks like a knuckle or a round tip, we call the bottom sirloin. Another term for it is ball tip. So we have the top sirloin, the bottom sirloin, or the ball tip. As you look at, first of all, quality, you want to primarily look at quality in the loin eye side, but you also want to look at quality, particularly for questions and reasons to talk about in the sirloin ends. You want to look at the overall marbling within both of these muscle groups, the firmness of the muscles themselves, remember firmer is better, the color, which one has a brighter color, for example, as you look at these two, I think you can probably see that this one has a brighter colored bottom sirloin than this one. Uh, while this one probably has a little more marbling. Those are points that you talk about in your reasons. So as you look at quality, you'd look at the amount of marbling in the entire face as well as each individual muscle group. You'd look at the color, again, of the whole face and then the individual muscle group. You'd look at firmness and also texture within those two muscle groups. Then after that, uh, you want to take a look again at trimness and muscling. Trimness you're going to look at over the entire face as well as over each individual muscle group. Then also you want to particularly look at seam fat. Generally the more muscular they are at this place, the more muscular they are in other places on this particular cut. Again, it's a window that you look, through, look at to evaluate muscularity of the, cut, uh, of the cut or the carcass. So as you look at this, you can see this one has a larger top sirloin and a larger knuckle than this one over here. Another term that we would use is meteor. You see less seam fat and more muscular, put that together, it just looks like a meatier face than this one does over here.